Hey everyone, it's Mr. Anderson one more time. We are going to be talking today about section 3.3.2 or the second part of our chapter 3, part 3 um, unit in our CPM Common Core Algebra book. This is a unit that we would typically spend a couple days on, but I'm trying to bare bones this for you to make it digitally and distance deliverable. Um, so we've, we've just kind of got some of the bigger ideas present here. Um, obviously, you can access this material on uh, your CPM ebook, and you can go uh, do the deep dive there if you see something that uh, kind of makes you interested. All right. Um, we're going to be talking about how we can work or solve um, an equation with two or more variables today. And um, up, up until now, we've really only focused on how we can be solving with one variable. Uh, and today, whenever we're solving equations that contain two or more variables and some numbers, we usually call those multi-variable equations. But sometimes, if you needed to Google this for whatever reason, we would call these things literal equations. And, and those are equations that occasionally we have to manipulate and solve for the purposes of evaluation, maybe. Um, but they only have variables in them. Um, oftentimes, they don't have numbers. And I shouldn't say oftentimes. Sometimes they do, like... Um, you know, like the formula for the area of a triangle, for example, has a one half or a divided by two, but uh, it's got an area, it's got a base and a height. And for the reason of manipulating it, um, I'm sorry, the, manipulating it for the reason of uh, solving for uh, a base or a height versus the area might prove um, um, fruitful. Okay, um, and we're going to go back to, to what we did, something we did in Chapter 2, and uh, that thing that we did in Chapter 2 referenced the big race. Um, remember all the, all the guys and gals uh, racing on the bikes? And um, we've got... I'm just going to zoom in here. Uh, I'm, I'm, P.S. I'm starting with Section um, 332, number 3-87 here, uh, if you want to align with this in your book. Um, we've got a situation here where we are in slope-intercept form. And here's the slope-intercept form of our equation, a uh, linear equation, sorry. And this right here is a specific one, y equals 3x plus 4, where we're given um, that, uh, that, that starting value, that head start value, as well as the, the rate at which the, the cyclist was traveling, right? X is the amount of time they've been racing for. Y is the distance from that start line. And in a situation like this, it's really, really easy to identify the answers to part A and, um, and B. Um, part A, for example, asks, hey, how much of a head start did that participant get? Well, remember, ladies and gentlemen, that is just the, the y-intercept, the starting value. Um, and I can connect that to B, and there's a strong connection there. Um, and our, our book did a great job of doing it. And I believe it was meters, right? Yeah, it is distance to meters. So this participant, um, I don't remember, did it say a name? I'm not sure. Uh, this participant got a four-meter head start. And then part B says, hey, what is this participant's rate of speed? Um, well, that's actually the slope, right? The slope is our rate of change. Spent a lot of time toward the end of chapter two talking about that. And we could write that as three over one, and that would be three meters uh, every one second. And recall that we, we write that oftentimes like that as, as three meters per second. Okay, so we know that that, that participant who, who's, who's um, model is y equals 3x plus 4, got a 4 meter head start and is traveling at a rate of 3 meters per second. And that really uh, is, is pretty nice when we are given a situation um, that is represented in slope-intercept form. But we're not always given information that nicely. Okay, and you can see as we move on to 388 here, um, things have changed. Okay, and so we had that slope and intercept nicely when we were in slope and intercept form, but sometimes we're given things like this in standard form. Now I'm going to zoom in on part A, and we're going to be talking about manipulating this multivariable equation for the purposes of changing forms so we can identify things like that slope and intercept. So this particular form where x and y are on the exact same side of the equal sign, this thing is called standard form. And what I have here is negative 6 x plus 2y equals 10. 
and they ask me, hey, what's the starting value? What's the slope? And folks, really what they're saying is solve for y. And that might mean we've got to be uncomfortable a little bit because not only do we have a y in there that we have to work around, but we also have an x. So we have to solve for y while maintaining you know, uh, integrity with rules, our algebra rules, rules for algebra around X. And this actually isn't that bad. And I'm going to try to do that for you here. I'm just going to rewrite it. And I'll remind you that despite the fact that we've got two variables here, we can still use inverse operations to do some canceling. If I want to find that slope and that intercept, I can go ahead and do so by solving for Y. And that's the same thing as saying get y by itself. So I'll move the x and all the numbers and stuff like that over to the right hand side so I can leave y alone on the left. And, and like I said, the rules of algebra that we've spent so much time developing, our inverse operations, um, they're going to serve us here too, right? And I'll start by getting rid of this negative 6x. And recall that if we do something like that, if I add 6x to cancel a negative 6x to that left-hand side, I also have to do it to the right-hand side. Okay, so it's, it's not like I can just do it for free and cancel it out. No, I've got to balance that over on the other side as well. But these do cancel here. I do have a 2y, and that's equal to... Now, here's where I'm going to take a little bit of uh, liberty because we're good enough at this point. I could write 10 plus 6x, but for the purposes of writing this in slope-intercept form, I'm going to write 6x and 10. Okay, now this is actually looking much more manageable, right? I didn't mess with the x at all. I just, I just shifted it to the other side. Now I'm going to get that, that y isolated by getting rid of that coefficient, right? That was two times y. I'm going to cancel that by using some division. Okay, and now look at this, ladies and gentlemen. I've got that equation right there in slope-intercept form. I can identify now very, very easily the head start that this person got. I can see that he or she got a 5 meter head start. I can also identify very, very nicely the rate at which they were traveling. I can see that that person is traveling 3 meters per second. We're asked, can you tell easily the slope or the intercept? The slope or the starting value, excuse me. And I couldn't when it was in standard form. But the ability to take it and shift it from standard form into slope-intercept form is what allowed me to do that. Of course, we could have graphed it. All right? If I graph either standard form or slope-intercept form, I will get the same thing. I promise. We didn't change anything about that line, just the way the equation looks. All right? A couple more of these. We're going to do some manipulating. Uh, this is going to be 390, and we're asked to solve uh, for the indicated variable. Uh, in part A, we're asked to solve for y. I'll leave this one to you guys watching this video because this one is much like one we did in our last video where you're going to be doing some distributing, you're going to be doing some solving, but I will tackle um, things like we see in part B. I've got another situation where we're asked um, to deal with an equation in standard form but we're not going to be solving for x here. I'm sorry, we're not going to be solving for y. We're going to be solving for x. So I've got 2x and 6y minus 6y, sorry, equals 12. Okay? And sometimes, you know, and I've seen students do this this way, they'll do things like, hey, I'll just uh, I'll highlight or I'll write the variable that I want to isolate all by itself in a different color. Okay? And, and if that's your jam, go ahead and do it. Right? But get rid of that 6y, move it over. And I do so using those inverse operations. I was taking the 6y away. Now I'm going to add the 6y. These will cancel. And I've got the 2x, and that's going to be 6y and 12, or 12 and 6y. Some of you are saying, Anderson, you didn't write the x yet. Yeah, I know. I was just going to try to write it in a different color, maintain a little consistency there. And now we're just going to go ahead and get rid of that 2. Remember, say these things out loud. It might help you identify what that inverse operation is. Divide everything by 2 because we know that's 2 times x, right? So I'll do that, and I'll do that, and I'll do that. Remember, whenever you are going to multiply or divide, we have to do it to each term, okay? And so then I've just simply got, on this left-hand side, after those 2's cancel, I've got an x, and then over here, I've got, let's see, 12 divided by 2, that's 6. 6y six divided by 2, hey, that's 3y. There is something like that that's solved pretty nicely. Okay? 
Um, problem uh, C is going to be similar. Um, we've got uh, a Y on each side, but check it out. I've got an X on the left-hand side as well. That, that X is going to have to go, um, you know, bye-bye as well. And let's, let's tackle something like that. Let's use a different color, though. Let's use, uh, so it stands out, let's use green. We'll do something like C down here. I've got 6X plus Y equals 2Y plus 8. Okay? Not too bad, not looking too bad initially, but I do want to solve for Y, right? They do say, hey, solve for Y. That means get the X by itself. All right, well, I'm just going to go ahead and start by remove. I'm sorry. I, I just said that totally backwards. I said solve for y means get the y by itself. I'm going to go ahead, though, and I'm going to consolidate those y's. I'm going to put them together. And I'll take the smaller number of y's, right? Over here, there's just one, if you need to, write that in. And I'll move it over to be with this other one. Okay, and what that does is it eliminates this from this side, and I have 6x. And over here, I've got 2y minus 1y. That's just y. That's actually, don't forget the 8, that's actually pretty gosh darn nice because that brings that coefficient down to 1, and now I, I don't need to do any dividing at the end. But I will need to take this 8 and move it over to the left. And I am going to just write this, you know, because the 8s are going to cancel here. You can see that. But I am going to take that over on the other side and write it. I could write negative 8 plus 6x. I am, though, going to write 6x minus 8 um, because now I've got an equation. It is in slope-intercept form. Um, I can identify the slope, I can identify the intercept. Um, critics might say, well, that's not y equals mx plus b, that's mx plus b equals y. Remember, when we are dealing with an equation, the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal, so you could just swap those for free uh, without uh, doing um, any sort of craziness there. Okay, let's tackle this last one. Let's see if we can get it done and keep this thing short. We got part D here, and, and part D is going to fit right down here in purple. It does say solve for x. We got 3 times 2x plus 4 equals 2 plus 6x plus 10, all right? Going um, all the way back to uh, uh, material from a couple lessons ago, we've got to um, distribute to get the... Um, the parentheses to uh, you know kind of disappear, right? How we that's how we that's how we skirt those order of operations, right? I can't add a two x and a four, but I can distribute the multiplication over addition and still maintain my my operations integrity. Three times two x is six x. Three times four is twelve. And that's equal to, now look at this other side here. I am going to do some combining like terms. I can see that I've got a 2. I can see I've got a 10. I'm going to go ahead and say, hmm, 2 and 10. Oh, 2 and 10, that makes 12 as well. All right, so 6x and 12. And uh-oh, ladies and gents, you notice anything? This is another callback to something we did a while ago. Do you see it? Do you notice anything about the left-hand side and right-hand side? If not... Let's figure it out. But if you do see it, you might be done with this problem, right? But check this out. I want to get the x's by itself, right? I'll subtract 12 from both sides, and the 12s cancel here, the 12s cancel there. Oh, my gosh. I've got 6x equals 6x. Holy cow. I'm going to divide both sides by 6, and I've got x equals x, and that is going to be true all the time, no matter what. And this is that situation, folks, where we've, we've done things like this before, but I'm drawing a sideways 8. There's my infinity symbol. We are going to have this situation all the time, all the time where x equals x, all the time where 6x plus 12 equals 6x plus 12, right? That's always going to be true. We've got infinitely many solutions here, okay? That is the... I think that was letter D there, right? Yeah, that was letter D. Okay, I'm uh, <clears throat> kind of zooming in here. Um, like I said, I took a two-day lesson and just kind of hit on the big picture points here, trying to, to get you guys to see some of these things that, you know, maybe you've seen before in, in some sort of pre-algebra course. We do have some review preview with uh, this lesson. There are one, two, three, four, five of those things, right? Obviously, if you're looking at some of the other ones, you can try them, challenge yourselves. Um, but I, I, I would say I hope that everybody can at least try these things. Um, ask questions, check your work, um, and, and we can learn um, from something like this. Okay, ladies and gents, thanks for watching. Have a great day.